Great, thank you. Um, hi again, um, joining now in my role as the Vice Coordinator of the IGS Infrastructure Committee and I'm presenting uh, today on behalf of Marcus Bracke, who's the coordinator who uh, couldn't attend. So the, the IGS Infrastructure Committee is a permanent body established to ensure that the data requirements for the IGS products and services are fully satisfied, while also anticipating future needs and evolving circumstances. Uh, its principal objective is to ensure that the IGS infrastructure components that collect and distribute the data are sustained uh, to meet the needs of our users, uh, in particular the analysis centres and um, IGS pilot projects and working groups. So the foundation of all IGS products and services is the tracking network. Uh, the network currently consists of 516 stations across 116 countries and regions. Um, they're operated by 120 organisations, and, and of those organisations, 20 contribute to over 70% of the network. Uh, now, an objective of the IGS is to move towards a fully multi GNSS service. Um, so, currently, 60% of the stations in the tracking network are observing uh, the, all four of the global constellations, and a number of them are observing the regional constellations where, where they can see them. Uh, recently, um, I think between just after IUGG, the uh, Infrastructure Committee uh, released an updated version of the station guidelines. Um, and within these guidelines, we're highlighting a strong desire for all the new stations to be multi-GNSS and provide real-time data feeds. Uh, we have a subcommittee within the Infrastructure Committee um, that we established to review and accept new station proposals. This committee meets on a monthly basis and is currently working with operators across some of the less represented regions, so some of the gaps you can see on the map there, uh, to grow the network. Uh, in the past 12 months, uh, proposals have been reviewed and accepted from uh, Latin America uh, and India, and we're assessing a number of stations in uh, Africa and the Pacific region. Um, so recently, the IGS Central Bureau, with support from the Infrastructure Committee, released version 2.0 of the SiteLock Manager. And this is a web-based application uh, designed to allow station operators to effectively and efficiently manage and share information about their stations. Uh, alongside the updated SiteLock Manager, um, there was also a release of a new network map, which kind of serves as a public interface to, to view the network and access information about the stations. And if you haven't had a look at it, it's worth, worth taking a look at because it's quite, um, quite user-friendly. You can search uh, different stations and filter different things. Um, yeah, so uh, the data from the tracking networks accessible via six global data centers, and we also have seven regional data centers. Uh, the Infrastructure Committee, with support from our Data Centre Coordinator and Data Centre Representative, recently commenced a review to better understand the risks around the management and access to um, IGS data products and services. Uh, the results of this review were presented to the IGS Governing Board in July, um, and key findings were that there's a high dependence on CDDIS, uh, there's limited synchronisation between the data centres, uh, there's no real consistent approach to the data validation or verification and that information security is not always being adequately, adequately addressed. Uh, within the review, um, the team presented um, a two-phased approach to addressing these concerns and the Infrastructure Committee um, has now taken that on board and will start implementing some of those um, recommendations to uh, mitigate those risks. Uh, to ensure our users get maximum value from the IGS data, uh, especially in the realm of machine-to-machine um, -machine communications and machine learning applications, um, we've identified there's a need to increase the machine readability of our data and metadata. Uh, the Infrastructure Committee uh, have a subcommittee now focused on progressing the adoption and use of JotCML within the IGS community. Uh, a key step in that process has been the transition of JotCML from Geoscience Australia's GitHub repositories uh, to uh, the IGS repository. And that's really highlighting that this is a, a standard for the community. Uh, so during my talk um, previously on the uh, subcommittee for data and information systems, um, one of the opportunities we have there is to avoid a bit of duplication in working on the same things. There's a potential to um, align or combine some of that work being undertaken um, by the, the two groups. 
uh, particularly because a lot of the same people are involved. So looking forward, uh, the Infrastructure Committee will continue to ensure that the IGS infrastructure and data are fit for purpose. And to help communicate that, we're working on a paper to share uh, our future vision for what the IGS tracking network should look like. Uh, as part of that, we're focusing on continuing to build capacity across some of the underrepresented regions. And that's something we're looking to progress in partnership with Commission 5 of the International Federation of Surveyors, or FIG. Um, we'll continue to advocate for the importance of information security across all the IGS infrastructure, um, which is highly important uh, to um, our data and services, uh, particularly as they're being used now for some of the more modern positioning applications. Uh, we'll continue to explore modern standards to improve the fairness of our data and metadata. And finally, um, if you would like to contribute to some of these objectives and help ensure sustainability of the IGS infrastructure, we're more than happy to include you in the group. So please uh, reach out to Marcus or myself. Thank you.